So let's open three, eQuest 364. And let's just uh, create a new project via the wizard. And there's two wizards, uh, the Schematic Designer or DD wizard. If you're doing a life cycle cost analysis, the what's referred to as the SD wizard is something that is great to start out with. In almost every lead project that we do, um, the design development wizard is what we start with. It's It has a few more options, and since lead models uh, do require a significant amount of work, uh, this is what we start with. So let's go ahead and click that. And I just want to show you a few things here. So when we start an initial model, you obviously have to set the location and, as we mentioned, the utility rates. There's a few things that are misleading with eQuest. One is this code analysis. And so people say, hey, let's do the lead and see version 3. Don't do this. It, it doesn't do really what you think that it does um, or what it's supposed to do at the moment. In the future, it might, which would make this course a lot easier. But at the same time, no matter what they'll ever be able to do with this, you should understand the process that we're going to cover today because there's so much about lead that is subject to interpretation that a computer could just never cover all of those caveats. And so uh, we have a location set that's pretty simple. When you select a California location, it selects utility rates. Those are not current and they probably never will be current. And so typically we just set this to custom and we fill this out later. And so the two, two of the major points that we had uh, poked at here were the code analysis. Don't mess with this lead NC thing. Uh, it's just gonna cause more trouble than it's worth. However, if you were new to eQuest, that's the first thing that people use typically. And uh, it causes more, much more trouble than it's worth for a new user. If you were uh, experienced, well, uh, I think that an experienced user might be able to get something out of that, but you, it's, it, it changes a number of things that may, may or may not be correct, and so you'll need to basically have this process memorized in order to double check that. And so the utilities, we just go with custom, which we'll be able to edit um, in, in one of the next screens. And so um, this initial wizard, we define the number of seasons. So if, for instance, if it's a school, it's, it has two seasons because uh, it has school year and summer. We can specify up to three seasons, though most buildings are only one season because the schedule is reasonably similar throughout the year. And so in this screen, we can define the uh, electric rates. So here we can define the flat rates. Um, Energy blocks are a bit more confusing. There's a video um, in the eQuest online section. So here, if it was $10 per kilowatt and five cents per kilowatt hour, this is all that we would have to enter. And in fact, if we use a flat rate, now that I entered something here, I could put in zero or uh, something that's really good to know is instead of entering zero in items you changed, Right click on it and select restore defaults, and then you'll have a value in green. So typically when it's a flat rate, it's going to be something around eight to 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And the next screen, uh, screen is um, natural gas since we specified that. And that's somewhere around a dollar per therm for statewide averages. From state to state, that can vary probably plus or minus 30 cents. And so the final screen here is just initial setup. And then we have this is the project navigator. We walk through this entire process for the model that we're working with today. And so we set up the building shells, which is basically just the frame of the building. And we set up the system types here. And so again, we have this all on video. So we pointed out the lead compliance that we mentioned. So let's go ahead and um, we're not going to save changes to this. And let's go ahead and just open up, open 
sample office PD2. And so, um, as we mentioned in the files, the file that you typically open is the PD2 file if you have it. If you didn't, um, theoretically, you could open up the INP file as well. And I'm just going to skip changes to that file. Um, if a file was created with a CAD file and you use, you use that file, um, when you open it, it will ask you, well, where is the CAD file? You can typically skip this step. So we could browse and find it, but we do not actually need to use the CAD file because we're not going to reference it anymore. So we'll just skip that, and it generates the building from the PD2 and the IMP files at this point. And so if you're brand new to eQuest, these buttons at the top are called modules. So there's six modules, and we typically want to work left to right with some exceptions. And since by the time we finish the wizard, the project and site is already set up, we want to enter the building shell. Now here's a picture of our building and the zones. We can look at the 3D geometry, and by holding the control key and left clicking, we can look through this building. And you can see the zoning, We'll cover more on this, actually, some of the zoning in a minute. But you can see what.